All right. So I'll be doing a tier list for all of the Colossal minions. You know, it's came about with doing the Titan tier list just because they're very similar mechanics. You know, it's a mechanic that it's one card that feels like very, very strong, right? The Titan was kind of like this larger, like it's been, oh, the, the Titans are almost like these like raid boss cards, right? Where you had to get rid of them or they kind of just ran away with the game or got so much value. And the Colossal minions, you know, they were these one minions, but they got you multiple bodies. It just felt like they had a big impact. So I feel like the two were very, very similar keywords and both very, very good keywords. And they were similar in the sense that every class got one and they were generally well received. You know, definitely some of the coolest cycles they've done in the last couple of years. We got Zillog, the Abyss, seven mana, three, six, legendary Demon Hunter, Colossal four at the end, sorry, at the start of your turn, increase the damage of Zillog's stocks by one. So what the stocks do is at the end of your turn, they shoot a random enemy for two. So basically you play this, you get the four, each of them shoots something for two. And then by some chance, you know, if Zillog lives into your next turn, he will buff them up by one. So any alive at the end of that turn will then shoot for three. I feel like it's no higher than a B. It might even be lower. I feel there, there was a Demon Hunter deck at one point that like cheat out copies of it. Summon, because basically one thing to keep in mind with Colossal Minions too, right, is if you cheated them out, so if you either summoned it from your hand or from your deck without playing it, it would still spawn the appendages. So it's not like, you know, like say someone dirty ratted out a Colossal Minion, it would then spawn the extra appendages. You couldn't get around that. So there were some decks and some classes that would cheat them out, right, because it didn't actually hurt it in any way. Oh yeah, this. Like you could play this and it would turn into a copy of Zillag, spawn the appendages. Void remembers Zillag being played a lot with thought A. Hmm. Man, this is a tough one. It was played a lot, but was it that impactful? Like, was it A impactful? I'm probably going to rate these similar to the Titans, where S were basically like game winning cards in a vacuum, right? A's were very, very good, but needed a little bit more support. And then B's were just like decent or kind of niche. Maybe by that logic, it is an A. Because it was very, very strong, right? And if you just left it alive, it just could run away with the game. I don't think it's S tier, but maybe it is A. I feel like I could compromise on that. <laughs> uh, Void, I saw a lot of play in those slower archetypes throw through the year of the Hydra. Yeah, maybe it is an A. I don't think it's S, but... Yeah, we'll go with that. Maybe we'll change it at some point once we go, once we go through some more, but I'll go with A. And then next up, we have Frost Queen Syndragosa, which kind of a cool thing here. This card didn't come out with Su Voyage in the Sunken City. This card came out in the mini set for um, March Lich King. Yeah, so this card came out in the mini set for March the Lich King. So it was, it was kind of similar to what I talked about earlier, how, you know, the Spellstone cycle, when they brought it back, they actually completed it with Demon Hunter and Death Knight. So when Sunken City came out, there was no Death Knight. So a couple sets later, once Death Knight was out, they actually came out with a Colossal Minion, which I thought was really cool to go back and kind of complete the cycle. And with it, we got Frost Queen Syndragosa, 7 mana, 6-6, six, six, Colossal 2. And it says, after an enemy minion is frozen, destroy it. And the two Colossal Minions you would get were two ones with Rush, and they would freeze any character that got damaged. So in essence, what you, what you would do is pay 7 mana, destroy two minions, and get a 6-6. Six, six. And, and there's potential other synergy too, right? If you had Syndragosa out and you had some other way to freeze something. Also, one thing to keep in mind that this it was actually changed a little bit. When it first released, is there a picture here? Yeah. Uh, so when this card first released, it also had one blood rune. So it was originally one frost, one blood, and then they changed it um, at what point? Oh, seven months later. They changed it seven months later to take out the blood rune. So it's only one frost rune now. Void. I love Cindy's design, but she got condemned about being a cross rune even before Rainbow was playable. Even when she got buffed to just frost, she was uh, power crept. Yeah, that was definitely part of the problem, right? At the time Sintragosa got released, it had one blood, one frost, but at that point, it, it, with Death Knight, you really only ran triple rune decks. So people were either playing triple frost, triple blood. There wasn't really Rainbow decks, so no one was running Sintragosa. I feel like the only time you saw Syndragosa was when it got like 
discovered or randomly generated in some way. You know, and, and then as you mentioned, Void, once they removed the blood, it just kind of wasn't good enough. So it is a cool card. I don't think it's bad. You know, there's been times I randomly generated or discovered it, and it was really, really good. Because like I said, kind of worst case scenario, right? You play a seven, you pay seven mana to destroy two minions and get a six, six. I feel like B, it's just not, it's not bad, not great. Didn't really run it in your deck. But the biggest problem was the, um, the, uh, the rune restriction I mentioned there. Uh, Void you see it most off of Ashara. That is true, actually. <laughs> That's probably how I saw it most, yeah. Getting it off of the horn from Queen Ashara. Which, like I said, if, if I got this off of the, the horn from Queen Ashara, I was fine with that. I feel like there's probably some Colossals here I would be less happy to get. And then next up, we got... Next up, we got Kolok. The Druid Colossal, 7 mana, 6, 5, Colossal 1, immune while you control Kolok Shell. And then the Shell is a 0, 8 with Taunt and Death Rattle gain 8 armor. I think before I even talk about it further, I think it's just a C. Or is it even a D? This is one of the worst Colossals, I think. And, you know, it's funny, we, we just talked about this card yesterday, and someone suggested if it had Rush, and I agree. If it had Rush, this card would be so, so much better because most of the time you're playing this card and then you pass to your opponent, they destroy the shell, and then next turn it comes back to you and you never got to use the um, immune effect, right? I feel like the entire time this card was in standard, I probably got to attack with it being immune like once or twice. So if it had Rush, that makes sense, right? You could rush and kill something with the immune. I feel like when you compare it to the other Colossals, that wouldn't really be that strong. You know, a lot of these other Colossals, you play them and they kill something right away. You know, Blackwater Behemoth, Krabatoa, Syndragosa, Leviathan, Hydro Hydrolodon, Zillag maybe. Like, most of these kill something when you play them, right? I feel like would it really have been that bad to just give this rush? It's only six attack too. It's not even, not even like I could trade into everything, right? Yeah, this one was doo-doo. It's too bad. Rush would have been a cool addition. Kissy says Kolok is the worst Colossal. Uh, Void says it's a D and it is the worst one. Uh, even Ozymat saw some niche play, but this thing never did. Yeah. I think the only... Kind of similar to Syndragosa, but at least Syndragosa was okay. I feel like the only time I ever saw or played this card was when it was generated from Queen Ashara. And this is one of the ones that when you popped the horn from Ashara and you got this card, you're just like, ah, oh, you know? It, it was essentially just a seven mana, um, seven mana, six, five, gain eight armor. Which again, when you compare it to some of the other Colossals, that's so bad. So I do think it's D. -er. I think, sorry, I, I do think it's D. I think it's even worse than C. Too bad. Because almost every other Colossal, like, we'll get to it. Azumat, also not that great, but pretty much every other class Colossal was good. Which is kind of funny because Druid is like historically very, very strong and broken. So the fact that they got the worst Colossal is kind of funny, kind of fitting in a way. Next up is Hydralodon. It is the Hunter Colossal. Seven mana, five, five, Colossal two. Battlecry, give your Hydralodon heads rush. So it would summon two, three ones that when they die, if you control out, sorry, when they die, if you control Hydralodon, you summon two more heads. So this one was interesting because if you cheated it out, yes, it would still spawn the two heads, but they wouldn't have rush because the rush was part of the battle cry. So that very much like balanced this card out a bit. And then obviously only the first two would have rush, right? So they would attack something, they would spawn two more, but those ones wouldn't have rush. So essentially what this was, was a 5-5, five, five, deal three damage twice, and summon a bunch of three ones. And then, yeah, the next turn, if Hydraldon was still alive, you could make a bunch of free trades. More often than not, it wasn't alive still, but those times it was alive still, you'd get so much value off this card. Or there's times, you know, where your opponent does like some damage based AOE, right? Say they play like Holy Nova or Defile or something like that. It just, it doesn't work, right? It, it just keeps spotting the heads back. In terms of tier listing it though, 
He's just a B. You know, Hunters ran it. It wasn't a bad card. It wasn't amazing. It was kind of similar to Syndragosa in that you played it and it had like some immediate effect, right? Remove some threats. And then it also had a continuous effect if you didn't get rid of it. By that logic, I'm almost thinking of dropping... No. This card, this one's very similar to these two, but I think it is a little better. What do you guys think? Kissy says A tier in every Hunter deck. Hydra was played so much. Is this A tier? Maybe it is. You're, you're definitely right, Kissy. It basically went in every single Hunter deck, right? And I guess it's very similar to Zillag. Both of these you played, they kind of did a little bit of immediate damage. And then if you didn't deal with them the next turn, it, they just kept doing more damage, right? Actually, I think you've swayed me. Maybe it's because I'm not, you know, uh, I'm still learning the ways of the Hunter. There's definitely times I lost to this card. I feel like between these two cards, I lost more times to Hydralodon than to Zillag. Uh, Drago also says Hydralodon is good. I think it's an A. Plan Hydralodon was played in nearly every Hunter deck when it was in Standard. Yeah, I think A is fitting, actually. And then next up for Mage, we have uh, Gaia the Tectonic. It is an 8 mana, 5, 7, Colossal 2. After a friendly minion attacks, deal 1 damage to all enemies. And it would spawn 2, 2-3s two with Rush. So, absolute worst case scenario on an empty board, you would summon the 2-2-3s. Two, two they would attack essentially for three dam well, 2 damage and then a 1 damage AoE. So you would get two damage on an AOE and then two dam or four damage to minions. Is this a B? I feel like this this card was good in Mech Mage, but not very good outside of that. You know, Zillag and Hydralodon, you pretty much ran in every single Demon Hunter or Hunter deck, but I feel like you wouldn't run this in every Mage deck. You'd run it in Mech Mage where it was very good, but outside of that, I feel like you didn't really see play. Drago says B. Void says C, Mech Mage was too aggressive to want to top out at 8, and other Mage decks didn't really run it. Magic says Guy was pretty good and Mech Mage was strong with the top with the three drop that did random damage to enemies. Not too good, but it was played in Mech Mage. But once that fell out of meta, it never saw play. I just feel like if I drop this down to C, then Syndra Ghost is also a C. But kind of looking at the list here. I feel like by that logic, every, like just meaning no Bs. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they, I think I like these both as B. They they were kind of like niche, right? Next up, we have the Leviathan. It is the Paladin Colossal, seven mana, four five Colossal one. Rush Divine Shield. After this attacks, Dredge, and then the one it spawns is the four two Rush Divine Shield. After this attacks, draw a card. Is this the first S tier? At the very least, it's A. It was running every Paladin deck. It was so, so good. Got you so much value. You know, it it replaced itself. It dredged. It eliminated like one big threat or two medium to small threats. With any kind of buffs from Paladin, it was even better. Dragu says it's an A. Void says it's an S. Kissy says Leviathan's so annoying. <laughs> Magic, uh, Leviathan was my favorite Colossal, not too strong, but always felt good to play. Yeah, I definitely don't think, um, I don't think any of these were like overpowered, so to say, but I feel like if I had to pick like a top three, like pick some of the strongest ones, I think Leviathan is definitely up there. Like especially Dredge was a very relevant mechanic, right? Because there was lots of cards during Voyage that put things in the bottom of your deck. Paladin specifically had some cards they played that put things on the bottom of their deck. So there were some very nice Paladin cards to dredge up. So yeah, you have the card selection of dredge. You have it replace itself. You have the immediate impact of the rush. You have the divine shield protecting it. I think it's S tier. Very, very strong card. Plan says premium draw plus destroying minions. Two great effects in one card. Easy S. Dragu played in pure mech and now in Highlander. Yeah, it was played every single Paladin deck. Imagine too with like, I feel like this would still be played if it was standard legal. Next up, we have Blackwater Behemoth, the Priest Colossal. Seven mana, eight, ten, Colossal one with lifesteal. And it spawns a one, four that at the end of your turn, it forces a random enemy to attack the Blackwater Behemoth. An enemy minion. 
So what this is doing is more often than not, it's basically, you know, healing 10 and removing a threat, depending on like the board and the situation, potentially like a really big threat. I'm wondering if this is also an S. I feel like I've played so many Priest games where this card just carried. Like there's so many times I drop this card on seven and it just saves me and keeps me in the game. Like very often this card was like a, you know, restore 16 life, kill multiple things. And against like aggro decks and stuff like that, I feel like this would just get me back in the game. Obviously too, there was the like between, you know, like creation protocol and different things you could like, or um, power cord synchronize, you could play and copy this thing multiple times. <laughs> but when it was eight, it didn't see play much. Was it originally eight? Oh, I don't even remember that. I do not remember this costing eight and being changed, but I guess it was a very brief period in time, right? It was only a month. Yeah, I don't know. I think to me it's S tier. I think this saved me in so many games. Next up, we go on to Krabatoa, the Rogue Colossal. Six mana, six five, Colossal two. Your Krabatoa claws have plus two attack. So what it would do, it would spawn two two ones with Rush that when they died, you summoned a two one claw. So one really cool aspect, right, is that this buff it would buff these by two, but also the weapon. So usually what you would do, so these would essentially be four ones. So what you would do is attack into something, hold, uh, you know, get the weapon, attack something, attack with the other claw. So essentially for six mana, you would deal 12 damage spread across potentially three targets and then have a four one weapon and a six five. I think like this one's also S tier. It was also the fact that, you know, it's rogue right? That it, it could be bounced with Breakdance, Shadow Step. There's many times I've played this multiple times with Rogue. Very, very strong. Like I said, more often than not, drop this for six, basically kill three things, and then have a 4-1 weapon and a 6-5 minion on the board for six mana. Rav felt like a weaker cousin of the Hunter Colossal for me. Really? Cheapest Colossal plus extremely versatile, played in every deck until rotation, easy yes. Dragu also says S. Yeah, I feel like these three, at least to me, we're not necessarily like game winning, but they're very, very, very strong. Like, I feel like obviously in a vacuum, the Titans are stronger. There are certain Titans, if you leave on the board, they just win you the game. I don't think, outside of like Neptulon, I don't think any of the Colossals really feel that way, which is a good, which is a good thing, right? There's... It's one thing for a card to be strong. It's another thing for it to be like game warping or, or broken. So I think they hit a good power level on some of these. Although comparing these to Kolok is just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, these three, very, very strong, very like influential to the game. Magic, I'm not very good at the game. So my judgment probably isn't the best. Hey, neither am I here. We're not pro players or anything. <laughs> so don't worry, we can be all shit together. But next up, we have Glug, the Gulper. It's the Shaman Colossal. Seven mana, three, five, Colossal three. After a friendly minion dies, gain its original stats, and it summoned three two twos with Taunt. I think this one, just see? Unless someone wants to make an argument for it. I don't think it's Colock bad, but it's not great. Obviously, there was like the rare situation where this card could just get out of hand. If you didn't have like hard removal, it could run away with the game. But I feel like hard removal is so common in the game nowadays that that was very, very rare to happen. Anyone want to argue for Glug? <laughs> I think the art and the animation were amazing for this card, though. Especially because, like I said, most of the Colossal, it, it spawns things on either side of it. And then Glug was all to one side. And I don't know. And it looks like one of those creepy deep sea fish. So theme and art were on point for sure. Magic, when I played aggro, my opponent's glug felt like an impenetrable wall. And when I played control, I never cared about opponent's glug. That's a good way to put it. Maybe it's because I'm a control player, right? So like 99% of the time this card got played, I would just play a removal on glug and then who cares? They have a bunch of two twos. Clan, glug was very awkward to me. Never really fit the shaman theme. That's true too, right? It very much doesn't vibe with Shaman. I feel like a lot of these other ones kind of fit the class pretty well, but that's right. Doesn't really scream. Like if you showed this card to me, right, without the class border and you said, what class would this go in? I wouldn't say Shaman. 
Like Glug is one of those ones that whenever I played again, when I played Queen Ashara, if I got Glug, I wasn't too happy. Kolak was worse, but yeah, Glug never felt good. So next up though, to keep things going, we have Gigafin, the Warlock Colossal. It was an eight mana seven four Colossal one with battle cry, devour all enemy minions, and then death rattle spit them back out. And it spawned a four seven taunt that when it died, it permanently destroyed all minions inside of Gigafin. So how this worked, basically you play it, it sucks up your opponent's board, and then you spawn the four seven taunt. So if this died first, it spit back the minions out. If this died first, they were just gone forever. So cool design, because obviously you want to kill Gigafin first. You know, it has less health. It's easier to kill, but it would be behind the four, seven taunt. Yeah, very, very cool card. I And this is a card. I think it's an I think it's an A or is it an S? This was played in every Warlock deck pretty much. The time was in standard. Gigafin was great in some situations, but the only one with but the only one with a downside. I've seen Warlocks deliberately destroy the main body. <laughs> I played Control Warlock and Gigafen felt more like a stall than removal to me. If my opponent hadn't killed me by turn 8, they probably had a way to kill the Colossal and bring the minions back. That's probably why, yeah, it's an A. I don't think it's S tier. I don't think it's B. I don't think it's I don't think it's on the same level of these guys. You know, yes, you're right that I feel like more often than not, this card was just a stall card, right? But that's sometimes all you needed. You know, if you could stall things for a turn or two and help you stabilize, that was all you needed sometimes. Also, it was always funny getting this card in Rogue. You know, say you generated this card off of Queen Ashara, because obviously as a Rogue, you sometimes played Queen Ashara multiple times. What you could do as a Rogue is you'd play Gigafin and then either Shadow Step or Break Dance the main body so they just couldn't get their minions back. That was always fun. I did that a lot, actually, I remember. <laughs> I think, so Shock says Gigafin's S tier. I feel like if it didn't have the downside, it probably would be S tier. I think if Gigafin just said devour all enemy minions and it spawned like the taunt, it'd definitely be S tier and elegant too. I agree, the design on Gigafin is great. Like I said, the fact that you want to kill Gigafin to get your minions back and it's the easier one to kill, but it, it spawns a taunt to protect it. Very cool design. This card depends a lot on play style. Some people love it, some hate it. Getting this in Rogue felt so good because Rogue lacks board clears. That too, right? Whenever I discovered this card with Rogue, it was so, so good. I think it's A tier though. As much as I love this card, I played this card a shit ton. I really liked it. Just because there was times, right? There'd be times you'd play this, kind of similar to Glug. There'd be times you'd play this and then it passes to your opponent and they just shoot Gigafin with something and get their board back. And then next up we have Nelly, the Great Thresher, the Warrior Colossal, seven mana, five, five, Colossal one, discover three pirates to crew Nelly's ship. And then the ship is a two, six taunt, which when it dies, you get the three cards you picked to your hand. They cost one less. And there's kind of an asterisk here <laughs> because this card was nerfed. When Nelly launched originally, it said this. Basically, you picked three pirates. When the pirate ship died, you got them to your hand and they cost one. And at the time, Mr. Smite was in standard. So if anyone doesn't remember Mr. Smite, Mr. Smite was your pirates have charge. <laughs> so you would get a one mana six five charge that would give the other two pirates charge. And it just resulted in potentially a shit ton of damage. And so what they did, I don't know why it's not listed here, but what they did was they changed Nelly to the cards you got. I believe they cost two less or they cost one less. Does anyone know? S for pre-nerf, D for post-nerf. I read Nelly plus pirate quest line dark times. Uh, it was reverted on rotation. Oh, okay. But I kind of agree. I think pre-nerf, this was S tier. This was one of the best Colossals. It was played, like, not even just in, like, Pirate Warrior. It was played in Control Warrior as well, just because, you know, it, it essentially generated you three cards, and especially with Mr. Like, you were always hoping to dis discover Smite, right? You discovered Smite. It was a lot of burst damage. But then, yeah, after it was nerfed, I feel like it was, like, C? I don't think it was Colock bad. I think it evens out to a B. 
if I try to balance out like pre nerf, post nerf, just a B maybe. But yeah, this this was before the nerf in like the top three colossals, I think. So yeah, maybe a B with an asterisk. Plan the original said that the pirates would cost one. Post nerf was one less. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that was a huge nerf, actually. I remember when that nerf hit, that card dropped off the face of the earth. Like, no one played it. Going from they cost one to they cost one less, so, so bad. Such a crazy nerf. But yeah, next up, we have the neutrals. So how it worked was there was one neutral colossal with the set launch, and then they added a second one with the mini set. The one that released with the mini set was Neptulon, the Tide Hunter. 10 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, Colossal 2, Rush Wind Fury. Whenever Neptulon attacks, if you control any hands, they attack instead. So it would spawn two hands. They were four twos immune while attacking. Oh, they were both in the mini set. Okay, I totally remember that wrong then. So how it would work is Neptulon would spawn, summon the two hands. You know, it would have Rush and Wind Fury. So the first time you attack, the two hands attack instead, which they're immune while attacking. You attack again, and then again they attack. So what would happen is, you know, you essentially play it, kill two big threats. More often than not, you were cheating this out in some way. Very, very rarely were you ever playing Neptulon for 10 mana. <laughs> and I think this card's S tier. Very, very strong card. You know, multiple classes could cheat this out in various ways, and you could cheat this out and just end the game. And this card still played to this day in Wild, which is definitely a testament to its power, right? And I kind of feel like this card's almost got better with time. Because as time goes on, there, be, there becomes more and more ways to cheat things out. And pretty much, like, if you're making a deck to cheat some big minion out, right? This is one of, if not the best minion to cheat out, like in the entire game. It's just, it has an immediate impact, and if it doesn't die, it's so, so strong. Because you think the next turn, right? So every time this attacks, if you have the hands alive, it does 16 damage, plus these hands can attack themselves. So if this lives to your next turn, and Neptulon and the hands are alive, that's 24 damage. So imagine cheating this out on turn five, turn six. Like very, very commonly, you, you would cheat this out. And if you didn't kill it on your next turn, you were just dead. So I think it's easy as. Void says Neptulon was incredibly well designed. Planned, played with Big Priest and Shaman and Wild. Yeah, like I said, it's still played to this day in Wild. Void removal and incredibly lethal if left alive. Neptulon single-handedly made Thunderbringer remotely playable. Oh yeah, Thunderbringer too. I forgot about that. Yeah, so they came out with Thunderbringer. That was another way that people cheat out Neptulon, which, you know, there was even ways to cheat out Thunderbringer. <laughs> so you would cheat out Thunderbringer, which would then cheat out Neptulon. Like I said, it was very common to get a Neptulon on the board, like turn five, turn six. And if you just didn't remove it on your turn, you were just dead. And it would probably just kill your board to turn it with spawn two, right? It's like the epitome of like a big payoff right like uh if you want to like i said if you want to cheat out some big minion neptulon is where you want to go and then last but possibly least <laughs> we have azumat it was the other neutral colossal eight mana six five colossal six death rattle for each of azumat's tentacles destroy a random enemy minion so basically it would spawn a board full of one threes and then when an Azumat died, if you had any tentacles on the board, they would smack and kill uh, some mini on the opponent's board. And, ah, oh, man. My, like, initial impression is, like, D tier. I think Azumat, yes, there were, I, I, you guys have talked about it earlier. There was, like, some fringe play with Azumat, but I don't know. I feel like it was so, so bad. Outside of, like, some meme decks, was it even played, really? Am I remembering wrong? Magic says Kolok and Azumat were the only Colossals I unpacked. I am so sorry for you. <laughs> Don't buy lottery tickets. Land says Azumat is hot garbage. Don't know why Blizzard printed this without Taunt or Rush. Void says C minus to D plus. I remember there being a Druid deck that actually ran it. Yeah, you're not wrong. At one point there was, so there was a Death Rattle Druid deck that did run this card. But I feel like this wasn't the card, the deck's like win condition. It was just kind of like an extra good card that they ran, right? 
because yeah, Druid had the location to trigger a death rattle. So you could play Azumat, trigger the death rattle and wipe your opponent's board. But I feel like that wasn't the reason you were playing the deck. That was just like something good the deck did as well. I think it's D. Like I said, outside of a couple fringe situation or meme decks, I didn't remember seeing any kind of play. It's kind of crazy when you when you compare the two neutral colossals, right? Neptulon, insane, S tier. Azumat, shit, D tier. <laughs> like different ends of the spectrum. It's actually crazy. These ones were obviously the strongest of the bunch. So, so impactful. These ones are also really good, but I don't think they were quite S tier. These Bs were just fine. Not great, not bad. Nelly kind of gets balanced out, you know? Originally, Nelly was an S tier. Then it got moved to like a C or D tier. I think it just kind of balances out to a B. Glug, not good, but not as bad as these guys. And then Kolok and Azumat, just doo-doo tier.